Typically, the most interesting substituted benzenes are those that contain multiple substituents. These tend to be the most functionally useful, for example. In order to synthesize these using substitution reactions, we need to think about those reactions for substrates in which there's already an R group on the benzene ring. Substitution reactions of substituted benzenes, in other words. In this video, we're going to focus on electrophilic aromatic substitutions of benzenes that already bear a substituent, reviewing directing effects, and looking at some problems that come in for certain R groups, especially when R is an amino group. In R2, we get a number of problems stemming from this nitrogen atom being a pretty good Lewis base and a strong electron donating group. Let's quickly review the directing effects of different types of substituents and electrophilic aromatic substitutions. This is something that should permeate your thinking as you're working with aromatics and synthesis and predicting the products of reactions. We've seen that groups that are electron donating by resonance are ortho para directors. This means that when we react an electrophile with a substituted benzene bearing an electron donating group, we should expect the electrophile to bond to the ortho position with respect to that group as well as the para position with respect to that group. And while in general we should expect a mixture of the ortho and para products, for our purposes we can use this reaction to synthesize either the ortho or the para products selectively because we can separate out the product we don't want and just isolate the product that we do want. That said, it is important to keep in mind here that the ortho positions are relatively hindered relative to the para position. In more complex situations, for example a substrate with two electron donating groups, we may need to judge the relative steric hindrance at positions ortho to those two donating groups to decide what the major product is. We'll address that in more detail in a later video, but I wanted to mention this now to get you thinking about steric hindrance in these ortho para reactions. Groups that are electron withdrawing direct substitution to positions that are meta to themselves. One important point with meta directors is that from a rate perspective, they tend to slow the reaction down because they're withdrawing electron density from the ring, and the ring behaves as a nucleophile in these reactions. Ortho para directors, on the other hand, tend to accelerate electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions by donating electron density to the ring. And it seems like the stronger the electron donating group, the faster the electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. However, we run into a little bit of trouble with aromatic amines or anilines where the electron donating group is NH2 or NR2. And the problem is that although it is true that the nitrogen atoms of aromatic amines are strong electron donating groups. They're also good Bronsted bases and good Lewis bases. And this reactivity causes problems in electrophilic aromatic substitutions. To see why, let's look at three different reactions that don't go as planned when we use anilines. The first is halogenation. Because the aromatic ring of an aniline is so electron rich, receiving electron density from this strong donating group, we don't even need a catalyst when we halogenate an aniline. The problem is that this reaction is so active that we end up with immediate substitution at all three positions, both ortho positions and the para position, in an uncontrolled manner. And so if we want a monohalogenated product, we can't use an aniline. We're out of luck. We're going to end up with the trihalogenated product no matter how hard we try. This can be a problem. And I'm not going to offer up a solution just yet, but we'll see one later in this lesson. In the top case, the reaction goes as planned. It just works too well, in a sense. But in sulfonations of anilines, we get into an even bigger problem, which is that the reaction doesn't go as planned at all. We don't get a substitution at all. Instead, the amine acts as a Bronsted base and is protonated to form what's called an anilinium ion, the conjugate acid of an aniline. Now, you may look at this lone pair and notice that it's part of the conjugated pi system. For example, it participates in resonance with the aromatic pi system next door, which suggests that it so shouldn't be that great of a base. However, as it turns out, the aniline nitrogen still is fairly basic, with a pKa of the conjugate acid that's right around 4.5. This means that the conjugate base is of comparable basicity to acetate. And so in the presence of a strong acid like H2SO4 or HNO3, it's going to react completely to form its conjugate acid. This is problematic for a couple of reasons. Not only does it mop up sulfuric acid that we might need to use in a sulfonation or nitration, but it converts the electron donating in our two group into a strong electron withdrawing ammonium group. This pulls electron density from the ring, slowing down 
electrophilic aromatic substitution. Adding more acid just compounds the problem, and so we can't fix the problem by, for example, adding an extra equivalent of H2SO4. Finally, the Lewis acidity of the amino group also creates problems in electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. For example, in Friedel-Crafts reactions, we can run into a problem where the amino nitrogen actually forms a Lewis acid base complex with the Lewis acid catalyst. The problem with this is it ties up the Lewis acid catalyst in an unreactive state. This Lewis acid base complex can no longer promote the Friedel-Crafts reaction. In a sense, the Lewis acid is engaging with the wrong thing. It needs to be reacting with the alkyl halide, but it's reacting with the stronger Lewis base, the amino nitrogen, instead. All three of these behaviors of the amino nitrogen create problems in electrophilic aromatic substitutions of amines. We're going to resolve these problems later, but I want to mention them now because they influence how we think about synthesis. It's going to be difficult to use an aniline in an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, and we need an indirect route to get to substituted anilines, and we'll see that in a later video.